I'm sorry for the delay. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what I'm talking about uh, is establish of lipid-based immunogen for the development of the uh, novel subunit vaccines. So there are different um, vaccine type of vaccine available for human use, including the live attenuate, inactivated polysaccharide, and subunit vaccine. I'm working on the um, subunit vaccine using recombinant DNA type approach. So the characteristic of subunit vaccine is they have a very good safety profile, but they are usually purely immunogenic. So normally they require appropriate adjudication <laughs> to be uh, efficacy. Uh, so what we think is, is that possible we can have a safe and effective subunit vaccine? So that means we try to have a cake and eat it too. So, uh, to do this, we go back to the um, basic immunology. If we are able to activate the antigen presenting cell like the NGC cell, we have a chance to enhance the antibody titer as well as induce high level of CTL response. So to do this, we check if we are able to combine the immunogen with the TLR ligand. So after this, we choose this uh, toll-like receptor that's a lipoprotein approach, and then we try to induce the TR2 and its co-receptors. So uh, actually, we finally uh, established platform technology, and I collaborate with Dr. Chen, Dr. Liu, and Dr. Chong. Uh, later, uh, he will also give a talk. Uh, so we can express the lipoprotein, and then induce the immune response through TR2, and then identify the lipid moiety, and then up, optimize the uptrain, and then the downstream. And also apply this technology to the monococcal group B vaccine, and also the dengue vaccine, and the therapeutic vaccines. So here, uh, I'm, I'm talking about this story. So the first of all, we have to fuse the immunogen with the um, uh, lipid moiety. So you need a tripeptide the nature of the signal peptide, like this. If you are able to express the high level of the lipoprotein, the anterior part you will contain this uh, structure, the NSO, SDISO, cysteine. So, however, to do this, uh, expression of this lipoprotein in E. coli system, it always uh, result in the low expression, incomplete modification, or entirely absent of lipid moiety. <coughs> so, I found, we found this as a crew. So you can see, the mature form of liver protein have to go to membrane. Therefore, we use this uh, spatial strain of an E. coli. After induction, it will develop the internal membrane like this. Yeah, so there are lots of membrane for liver protein to express. So we collaborated with uh, Dr. Yang in Johnson University. Uh, here's the monococcal group B, the, the immunogen. It's a natural lipoprotein. So we try to express this pro lipoprotein in this uh, special strand. So we find it, and then we can purify this lipoprotein. And then we identify the intact protein. We find this, uh, this kind of uh, um, signature of the lipoprotein. And then we also identify the exact mass in, at its end terminal. So this would transfer to our CGMP area for industrialization, and then ID was approved by Taiwan FDA this year. So the, the next question is, it's not every immunogen or antigen is lipoprotein. So next question, we try to make the um, non-lipidate antigen become lipidation. So there's a lot of a signal peptide. We try to fuse the, with our antigen and then to check out the expression level. And then finally, we found a uh, blend is a, can have a very good expression. So we go back to this um, Niceria uh, antigen and then divide it into four parts and then check out. And then we found they need a uh, terminal part sequence for the, for the high level expression. So when, when you figure out this, uh, so we can get the lipid protein. We use the dengue target, that's the E3 domain, envelope for E3 domain, 
and then we get the lipid protein and non lipid protein. The characteristic for the mass spectrometry is the same as the original lipid protein. So first of all, we uh, check out if this lipid protein can induce the uh, dendritic cell owner. So here shows the lipid protein can upregulate the uh, MSC molecule and it cause stimulatory molecule like CD14 and induce the secretion of the uh, cytokine like uh, IL12, TNF alpha. Since this comes from the cola system, so we try to um, show that uh, we get this kind of activation is not caused by the residual of uh, endotoxin, LPS. So we also add the uh, polymixin B to show the level is the same. So it cl clearly uh, demonstrates that this kind of activation is caused by the lipid moiety for the non lipid and lipid one. So the next question we just um, check if um, the go through which pathway. So we use the uh, wild type mouse TLR4 deficiency and TLR2 knockout mice. It's clearly sure that uh, this uh, lipoprotein goes through the TLR2 uh, receptor. It's similar to that uh, this POM3 is the synthetic lipoprotein, lipopeptide. So here comes the question. What are the lipid structure at the molecular level? Because previously people don't know we can not get uh, enough amount of lipoprotein from the bacteria. So, and then the important question, are the lipoprotein and the POM3, they induce the TLR2? Are they induce the same immune response or not? So we use the, uh, first we check the um, uh, immune, the, Lipid the structure of lipid moiety, and then found that there's an uh, um, unsaturated double bond at its uh, um, R2 position. So we use the cytokine array to check if the, um, this lipoprotein and the lipo synthetic lipopeptide is the same response or not. Actually, it's not the same. Uh, we use ELISA to confirm this result. You can show it's only at this R2 position, the structure is different, but the immune response are different. So use this lipoprotein kind of approach is different from the um, previous use uh, synthetic lipopeptide. So the things uh, we can activate in three cell, how about the enhanced antibody titers? So we use the dengue virus. You, you can see without any adrenaline, it's the, the neutralizing antibody titer is better than the non lipidate antigen and also the um, non-lipid antigen formulate with the aloof phosphate. Actually, there are four uh, serotypes of dengue virus. Actually, four serotypes has got a similar result. So after um, we check the, um, if they have a um, memory effect, after day, uh, uh, week um, 28, we re reinfect the mice with the uh, dengue virus. And uh, you can see it can the lipid one, this one, this group, can induce the antibody titer very quick. And also, this is a neutralizing antibody titer. So next, we try to check uh, the other arms of uh, immune response. And then uh, the select target is the E7 uncle protein from human papilloma virus type 17. So uh, it's the same. We got the non lipid protein and lipid protein. And the uh, mass spectrum is the same. Uh, it also can induce the uh, dendritic cell, activate dendritic cell. So the next, um, for the therapeutic purpose, we try, we want to see if they bias to TH1 response or not. Um, for the B cell response, the isotype, the lipid one is biased to TH1. And also in the T cell part, you can interferon gamma and IL5. So you can see, even your antigen, your target antigen is by TH2. After lipidation, it to, you will uh, school toward the TH1. So the next C, if they can induce the E7 specific cytotoxicity toxicity uh, activity, so lipid protein is better than the non lipid one. So next we go to the uh, animal, inoculate the tumor cell 
and then just one dose of a uh, um, lipoprotein, you can see the long lipid one is uh, similar to the control group, but the lipid protein can induce very good um, anti tumor immunity against the tumor. So the next question is go through the CDA or CD4. So we use the uh, anti uh, antibodies to deplete the CD4 or CDA to see this result. So you can see the original group all used control antibody or deplete CD4 is similar. But after deplete the CDA, the tumor grows again. So it's a um, clear demonstrate the CDA played a major role in this in anti-tumor immunity. So we also um, go further, check out if the dose and treatment time is important. Yes, the, the, I think um, people can respect that. The higher dose um, will have a, a more uh, effective. And then after day uh, 16, this protein, um, the tumor uh, is grows to a growth um, big enough, it still a go to like a, a control group. So we next try to, can we formulate this with our uh, agonist immunopotentiator or not? And then we use some uh, poly IC, CPG, uh, IDIP, and then find out if this lipoprotein with CPG have a very good immune response, then we check out if this is okay. And then at that uh, 17, so it can induce the anti-tumor immunity to regress the tumor. So we go further, have it let, uh, induce the um, long-term uh, memory effect. After day um, one, 135, so you can see the naive, and this, uh, um, the, this is the naive, this is uh, with the um, antigen. Recharging the tumor cell, it can still protect. And also, uh, we go f um, longer time, <laughs> treatment time, when the uh, tumor grows very big. You, uh, at day um, 25, there's a tumor where regret, but after all the way, um, still grows. So I think this result, we think we may be uh, alone. One treatment is not enough. We maybe can combine surgery, um, radiotherapy, or chemotherapy together. That's what we think so far. So uh, this technology is a uh, application to a peptide or um, protein antigen that can induce very strong hum humoral and cellular immunity and low cost of production because it's, it's the same as the uh, right now people use the coli system. So safety regulation, complete IP protection, oh, yeah, this is a correlated paper. So we can identify that special strand for this uh, platform. And then the sequence, how to make the lipid protein become lipid. This is uh, upstream, downstream, and then apply to the other um, purpose. So we so far, the, this monococcal target already approved for the uh, Taiwan FDA, go for clinical trial phase one, um, we prepare to go for. And then this dengue and HPV therapeutic vaccine is licensed negotiation with, our, uh, with several companies. And then we also try to um, explore this technology to um, make influenza, monococcal, and pneumococcal, and then all cause um, more cancer vaccine. And then the TB we try if possible now. Yeah. So thanks to the, uh, my, the people in my lab and the collaboration, uh, especially the Dr. Chen, Dr. Liu, and Dr. Chang, and also Yan Ko, and then uh, um, Yang, Dr. Yang, and Dr. Chen. Yeah, thank you very much. So, questions? <laughs>